No, thank you. And I really appreciate you guys having me. So as you heard, my name is Ramon Escobar. Uh, I'm the SVP uh, of talent recruitment uh, and uh, talent recruitment and development for CNN worldwide across the world. My pronouns are he, uh, his and him. So I'm so glad to be here. And I've been a member of NLGJ for a long time, uh, since I got into the business almost 30 years ago. So it's an honor to be here, especially in such a wonderful event that is particularly addressed to students. So at one point in my life, I was a, a student uh, out there looking to figure out how I was going to navigate this incredibly exciting, but sometimes complicated world of media. So I'm so glad to be here. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate all of you for being part of this conference and being part of NLGJA. Uh, it's incredibly important that you participate. Uh, and that you have taken this opportunity. And the reason I congratulate you is because I think we've noticed, if you haven't been reading the, the news, I mean, you've noticed how important it is to be visible. Um, I mean, Carl Nassib just came out in the NFL and I mean, it was everywhere and everyone couldn't believe it. And it's such a big story, which just goes to show you that even in 2021, uh, we still had been at a point where no major athlete in any of the four major sports in the United States, and I know in sports all over the world, like uh, the, the Premier Leagues of Soccer, there, there is no openly um, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender person in most of those sports. And so it's got a lot of attention. The larger point is not about sports, it's about visibility and how important it is that you be visible and what it means. So I want to thank you for doing that. And Participating in NLGJ in a conference like this is another step towards being visible and owning who you are. So I want to congratulate you that. Congratulate all of you for that. Uh, it shouldn't be lost on us that today, as I speak, literally as I speak, and I just turned on the TV behind me, so it's not to distract everyone. But you know, we're on, we're about to cover just I think right as as we're speaking now, uh, the pre president of the United States uh, addressing the country and the world about our community. Um, the first uh, member of the LGBTQ plus community uh, named to a cabinet post um, and Pete Buttigieg is going to be with him along uh, with several other members of, of the administration to talk about all the issues confronting our community. Uh, there'll be many advocates and community leaders there uh, and they're going to commemorate uh, Pulse on its uh, anniversary and making it a memorial. Uh, there are going to be many members of the trans community there as well, because as you know, our trans brothers and sisters who are part of our community are facing some of the most stringent hate and discrimination that we've ever seen. And so that's being addressed today. And I, so once again, I just want to say your visibility is critical. It's crucial, it's necessary, and it's inspiring. So thank you for being here. And I, I also want you to make sure you don't let anyone else tell you otherwise in this business or anyone else. Be yourself. Um, being out is the gift we give ourselves. So today, the session that we're going to have here in the lightning round for the next 15 minutes is really putting your best foot forward, putting your best self forward in print and in person when you're trying to prepare for an interview or trying to really seek that job you want or think about opportunities. So I'm going to give you some, some thoughts and ideas and advice that I've learned along the way. Some of them I've learned from mentors, some of them I've learned by my own mistakes and failures, and it's sort of a summary of all of those things that I hope help you. Uh, in my role at CNN, I oversee all the talent recruitment and development for on-air talent and off-air talent, everything having to do in the editorial world, producers, uh, associate producers, bookers, executive producers, uh, all our digital news gathering, all our news gatherers, and then of course, all our anchors, correspondents, uh, everyone on the air, all the reporters. Um, my job with my team is to find the best and brightest around the world and internally and bring them to CNN and also develop them and develop the next generation of anchors and correspondents. It's, I have one of the best jobs in the world. I'm very fortunate. I'm very uh, lucky to have it. Uh, but there's some things I've learned along the way in interviewing the thousands and thousands of people that I've interviewed, including students. So I hope that you can benefit from that. So based on what I just said, right, about being yourself and being visible and congratulating you for being out and all those things. Then let me start there because the most important thing I think you can be when you're out there pitching yourself is to be yourself, to be your most authentic self. Um, 
and I think that's a critical part of who you are to be proud of that. And it's not just about your gayness or your bisexuality or your or your gender identity or any of those things. It's all the dimensions of yourself. So you know, I'm I'm gay. I'm a cis gay man, but I'm also Latino, Latinx. Uh, I'm also from the South. I'm also from Arkansas. That shocks people more than anything else. Uh, but all these things make me who I am, and and I. I think it's important to own those things and be proud of them. And even the parts of your life that maybe you aren't or others aren't as um, proud or might judge you for, they make you who you are. So be proud of that. And don't let anyone um, discourage you from being your most authentic self. So that leads me to sort of the second thing, and that's self-awareness. Self-awareness is the other gift we give ourselves. So here's what I mean by this in terms of the job and when you're out there looking. Self-awareness is really understanding your passions, your interests, and really tapping into your curiosity um, because that will help us drive and help you kind of figure out what are some of the things that you really wanna do, right? And, and I really do believe that 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 30 years from now, yes, I know this soft, supple, ageless skin belies my age, but you, will, you don't wanna be saying, oh my gosh, wish I could have, would have, if I just would have followed my passion instead of doing now, which just pays the bills. So really helping your passion and your curiosity drive you. And those things may change throughout your career. Listen to those things. Listen to that inner voice of curiosity. I wonder what would we like to do that. Um, so, so that will help us think about if I'm coaching someone, well, what is it really that you want to do? Or what are some of your interests? So think about not just a job. Think about a job in terms of, okay, yeah, I want that job. But break it down into what are the skills that I would need to have that job? You know, what are the experiences or exposures I might need to have that might tell someone I'm ready to do that job? A lot of times we have too many people focused on, I need that, that job or I'm, I'm shooting for that star. And they don't think about, well, what are the steps to that journey? And I need to figure out what those skills are. HR calls those competencies, but I, I call them more skills, experiences, exposures. So, so don't just tell me when I'm interviewing you or anyone's interviewing you, like, I want to be fill in the blank with whatever your dream job is, right? I want to be the president of CNN. I want to be Jeff Zucker, the CEO of CNN, let's just say, right? Um, or I want to be the anchor of Good Morning America, or I want to be the lead reporter at the Washington Post, or I want to run my own ad agency. These may be dream jobs, and they're great to have, and there's nothing wrong with expressing those things. But what? But it's important you illustrate you're a lot more sophisticated than that, and that you understand that there are skills and steps to get to a place like that. And a lot of times those steps might be many and those steps require certain types of skills. So if I wanted to be, you know, Zucker was an executive producer. So I'm okay, I need to be an executive producer. Well, I need to first learn what does it take to be an executive producer? Well, most executive producers were producers and most producers were associate producers and most associate producers were production assistants. So you look and you do your homework and study what it takes to do those jobs and start thinking about, well, what steps do I need to take? Um, this is obviously a much abbreviated version of this, but I'm happy to chat about it more. I'll give you my email at the end. So just realize that a lot of times it's a series of steps and experiences and not the job itself. And you want to think about and map that out. I, I tend to map that out on paper, the types of things I want to do and think about the skill sets. So that takes me to point three. Point three is, and this is the one that everyone makes a mistake on. I'm shocked by this. Do your research and your homework. I am amazed how many people do not do their research and their homework. It's the biggest mistake and the biggest missed opportunity people make. Everyone goes in an interview like every interview is the same. No, every interview is like a fingerprint. It's different or a snowflake. Every single one is different because you're meeting different people, different companies. So when I say do your homework and do your research, I mean do the homework about the job you might be seeking or series of jobs if they have many. Know what they are. Look for the posting. Look for other jobs. Look for information about what those jobs are. Try to find people you know who know people who have those jobs. Know everything about the organization. This one shocks me because most companies that you might be looking to work in are, many of them are publicly traded companies. So they got, they got all types of background and information that you can access on your fingertips and on your phone. You know, using Google and using any other tool you have, you can find out almost everything about a company. What are their goals? What's their board? What's their strategy? All of that stuff. You'll be amazed and shocked how many people do not even understand the company where they're working for. They, couldn't even tell you if it was public or private. They couldn't tell you who the CEO was. They couldn't tell you what their major issues are. When most of that stuff is sitting out there and publicly available if you do the research and do your homework like a good journalist would. Um, and then the one that really baffles me is when someone walks in, they don't even know who they're interviewing with, 
right? So unless it's a surprise interview, which most are not, you know the name of the person you're going to be interviewing with. In some cases, it might be a recruiter, but even if you know the name of the recruiter, do your research. Don't walk in and not know anything about the person you're sitting in front of if you can help it. And I know many people who do that. So yeah, I was once, I was a news director many years ago in Miami for the NBC station. And I've had people walk into my office who are reporters at the station where I was a news director 10 years ago and had no idea that I was a news director at the station where they worked. And they, they've actually commented to me, oh, do you know something about Miami? I'm like, wow. I'm like, it's okay. I literally, it's one click away and you would have read that I was a news director where you're now working. Um, so that kind of stuff, it's like, when I hear that's like kind of like game over, like you're not, you're not even capable of doing your own research. It's not about me. It's just like, you wouldn't even do your research. I had someone that started, uh, that wanted to be an intern who came in to CNN and it was the day that the new CEO of CNN was named, Jeff Zucker, like 10 years ago. And I asked them, well, what'd you think about the big news? And they had no idea what the big news was. So they came in completely not knowing what the hell was going on. So that leads me to point four, which is be prepared. Yes, be prepared. I know it sounds obvious, but you'll be shocked how many people aren't. That means your homework and research needs to help pay off. So you need to, if you do your research well, you, it'll help you anticipate the questions that someone like me or others are gonna ask you, right? So all the homework that you need to know about the company, about our strategy, about what we're trying to do. So for example, if you were studying my company, you would know, and you were studying me or others who work for me, you would know that my team most recently named all the race and equality team at CNN. And we just named all the climate team that was announced three days ago. And we just are now getting into all of our direct to consumer and streaming service, CNN Plus, it's all over the Wall Street Journal and other papers. You would know that that's a big effort in our company and we're investing millions of dollars and hiring hundreds of people, right? You would have done that research. So when you come in, you'll be able to talk about it. Um, but then I can know right away whether you know about that or don't, or whether you're completely out to lunch. So uh, think about that as something that, that's what it means to be prepared. Also be prepared about you. Um, if you're from a certain place, I'm gonna, I might ask you about that place. I interviewed somebody once from Denver, from a Denver TV station that was interviewing at our place. And I asked them, uh, hey, so what's going on in Denver? What's, what's, up the, what's, what's up with the economy? I went to Denver and noticed there was a lot of homelessness. It kind of reminded me a little of San Francisco and Seattle. Can you talk to me about that? Couldn't talk about it. Uh, what's the unemployment rate in Denver? And, and what's the unemployment rate in Colorado? Didn't even know. Couldn't even, couldn't even get close, right? So if you don't even take the time and care to do your own homework about where you're from and where you're working, it's going to make me think, well, what made you do the homework nationally, right? You can't even tell me about where you live or where you're from or can't give me any meaningful information or detail or context about what it's like there. So do your homework and be prepared. Uh, be prepared about what's in the news. If I was talking to many of you today and interviewing today, I would ask you, hey, what's your opinion about what's going on with Joe Biden and what he did today? Joe Biden's giving a major, major, uh, you know, appearance and speech about our community about LGBTQ right in the middle of the White House. He's got Pete Buttigieg there and he's got uh, members of all the different organizations. You know, the head of GLAAD is there and the head of uh, um, HRC is there. Um, and if you're looking at me and saying, what's HRC? Hillary Rodden Clinton's there. Um, my whole point being is if you can't have this kind of conversation with me, it's gonna tell me you're not prepared. Um, and that doesn't mean that you have to, you know, just because you're gay, I assume you're an expert in all things gay. That's not expertise, that's basic information, okay? So be prepared. Uh, and then I think the other thing you need to be prepared about is you need to be prepared to talk about you. Can you tell me your story? Everyone has a story. You may think it's boring, but it's not. No stories. I mean, it's all in how you tell them. And it's all, I mean, how, why are you here? Why, what do you, why do you want to do this profession? What's driving you to do it? What, you know, what's your story in that sense? Don't miss an opportunity to tell your story and be prepared. Okay. Um, then there's this thing that I wanna remind you of in being prepared. When you get asked in an interview, do you have any questions? The answer, the worst answer is no, I'm good. Okay, that is not a good answer, okay? When people ask you, do you have any questions? What they're really asking you is, let's see what this person has to offer. Are they thinking, have they listened? Do they have interesting observations or inquiries? Never miss that opportunity to answer that question and hit it out of the park. You should never be surprised. Almost in every interview, if they're good, they're gonna ask you, hey, do you have any questions? And that's not a throwaway if you think it is. That's actually a test in most cases. 
I know it is for me. I'm like, hey, do you have any questions? And it's like, wow, I was so complete and thorough that you have no questions. No, of course you, you should have questions and you should come prepared with those questions, right? And try to frame those questions in a way that shows, that gives me a showcase that, of things that you know. You know, hey, yeah, I do have a question. I've read and, and you know, uh, been checking out the fact that you guys are all getting in direct to consumer. And I had this thought and this thought, what, what does that mean to this? And I'm like, okay, they're doing the research. They know the company. Okay. So it's another opportunity to impress, um, which leads me to point five. Know that you're always being interviewed. Many years ago, I was at this event with a bunch of other colleagues uh, and it was all people of color meeting with the senior executives of General Electric. And, and I remember we were in the lunch line and, and this, this uh, young woman I was young too, but she looked, she looked, she was in the program and she looked at me, she was like some engineer at GE and I was the, uh, a news director at NBC. We were both owned by General Electric at the time. And she says, do you think we're being interviewed uh, right now? I said, yes, we're always being interviewed. Everything we do, every, every behavior, every interaction, which reminds me of every interaction that you have with me, with others, with any company in any form is an opportunity to impress or to disappoint. Let me repeat that. Any interaction you have is an opportunity to impress or disappoint. And so think about the interactions, what they mean. I'm talking about emails. Do you know how many people misspell my name? Would you like your name misspelled? Of course you don't want your name misspelled. And if you're a journalist, it just shows you, wow, they're not even capable of figuring out my name, right? A lot of people put an E at the end of my name. That's not the way you spell it, right? Even in the email where I'm writing them and my name is there, my emails, don't get it wrong, right? So I, typos I get, autocorrect, but I'm talking about real mistakes. And it's not just that, it's just issues of accuracy, issues of grammar. Um, so emails are important, phone calls. I'm shocked at the number of people who mistreat the lower people. Like if you're talking to my assistant, you're talking to me, right? And so how you treat others is really how you treat everyone and how you should treat everyone. So treat everyone with great respect, treat, treat everyone um, in a gracious way, because you'll be surprised how many times others will tell me, wow, that person's really great. I, they always respond. Responsiveness, respond. If they ask you for something, immediately give it to them. Don't wait days. Don't even wait two days. Tr try to respond immediately. I'd like to see more clips. Boom, give them those clips. I need this. Give it to them right away. Do not make it hard for them. Um, and then I would, one last word on social media. So social media is also you. Keep that in mind. Social media is your expression to the world. Now, for some of you, that might shock you, but we check social media. I have a whole team. That's all they do. They'll check the whole thing. If I'm interested, if we're interested in you, they're going in and looking at all your stuff. And you'll be shocked, maybe not, about how crazy some of the stuff is where we're saying, my God, that was bad judgment. Um, if you want to be a journalist or you're looking to get into this business, think about everything that you do in social media as a reflection of you forever, right? In perpetuity, as they say, uh, unless you remove it or take it down. I interviewed someone who was interested in working for the, uh, on, a, on a beat covering the police. And we discovered in their social media, they were young, but in their social media, a bunch of stuff criticizing the police and not just criticizing the police, calling them names. Criticizing the police, everyone's fair game for criticism in a, in a journalistic way, but calling them names, using epithets, using foul language, it was completely inappropriate. I actually called that that young reporter and, and told him the story. He said, listen, you should know. I mean, this is not good. You should have taken that down a long time ago. Um, and it wasn't about the criticism of the police. It was the, the, the use of foul language and, and insults. And the whole point was, well, what's that about? And so obviously if that's which, how you feel and that's what you want to do, okay, well, that's a different, maybe you're going to be an opinion writer and you're going to, but you know, calling people foul names and things of that nature, inappropriate and offensive stuff. And that's just a gross example. But if you want everyone to think that you're at a party and you have, you know, red solo cups every time I come and see you, you're, you're drinking at parties and drinking at parties, just understand, use judgment and know that your social media is something that many companies will look at uh, and just be comfortable with it. If you're comfortable with it, then fine. OK, um, a few more points and we're done. Um, if you share it, meaning if it's on your resume or you've mentioned it, it's because you want to talk about it. So I'll see resumes that'll mention, I worked, you know, I worked at the Gap for a summer. Okay, great. The reason you're putting it on your resume is because you may want to talk about it. That's kind of the rule I use. People say, should I include the stuff I did when I was in college? I said, if you think it's important to your future, 
So I, I did have a young man who put on there that he managed his uncle's tire company when, you know, the summers of high school. And I thought it was interesting because I said, okay, if it's on here, you must want to talk about it. And I talked to him about it. And he said, yes, he said, unfortunately, he couldn't do other things because of the family economics, but he got to the point where he actually could manage the tire company and he learned a lot of things about it. He learned about balancing budgets and he turned it into an opportunity to tell me something about himself that I found very interesting. So another woman put on that she had uh, been champion of baton twirling. And so we had a long chat about that. And I was impressed by her and uh, 12 years of competition and how much work she put into it and mastery learning and what she learned from it and discipline. I was like, okay, that was really impressive and something I took away of value that she put it on there. So if you're going to put it on there, it's because you want to talk about it. And if you put it on there and you're shocked that they ask you about it, shame on you because you put it on the resume. Understand if you put it on the resume, it means it's fair game for us to want to talk about. So just don't put it on your resume thinking, oh, no one's going to ask me about this. Well, then why is it on the resume? Okay. So think about that. Um, seven, follow-ups. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. Follow-up is simple as sending a thank you note, which you should always send. But use your thank you notes and your cover letter and your interaction, whatever email it is, use it as a way to advance yourself. Meaning, hey, thank you so much for the time we spent yesterday. Okay, that's nice. I'll say, I'll say okay, well, that's, that's, that's considerate. And then I'll, I'll not remember once you did that. But if you said, hey, thank you for the time we spent. You know, as I mentioned in the interview, one of the things you talked about was leadership. Well, you know, I looked up this thing that you mentioned and here's what I learned. I'm now using it in the story. That at least makes me, oh, they thought about it. They're interested or I, I, it introduced me to your thinking. I got to see a little bit more about you. I learned something from you. Use every opportunity to have a content-based exchange. Don't just say thank you. Say thank you and think about one of, now don't bend over backwards to make it ridiculous. But there's always lots of things that you can reference that just reinforce, oh, yeah, I remember him now. He was really smart. Oh, I remember what she said. I remember that experience she had. That really caught my, caught my eye. And that makes you more memorable, more interesting. It tells me another dimension about you. It might show me an element of emotional intelligence or whatever, okay? So be, make sure you follow up. Be specific when you follow up. If there's a job, of course, you've already done your research and know the jobs that are out there, you know, then reference that and reference, hey, I've applied for this. Is there some you know, I'd like to follow up with someone. Could you tell me who the hiring managers are? What do you suggest I do? You know, ask for a follow-up in that sense that's substantive. Uh, and so you can be a pleasant pain in the butt, uh, not an annoying one. Uh, and so that takes us really to the end, I think, as we're headed here. Um, the last two things I would tell you is uh, be flexible. Think about the jobs that don't exist. That's not a trick question or a trick comment. There are actual jobs right now that you will have that don't exist the way I have jobs that didn't exist. When I got into this business not too long ago, um, Facebook didn't exist. Twitter didn't exist. Um, none of that stuff existed. And now that's, that's, that's the source of many jobs in social media. Streaming didn't exist. Direct-to-consumer, HBO Max, you know, Twitter, uh, Netflix, all those things weren't around. Think about all the hundreds of jobs, thousands of jobs that those things have now created. So be flexible. Understand that sometimes, yes, a door will close, a window will open, which means, hey, there's another path here. This could be interesting. And, and jobs that you didn't know ever existed, those are fun jobs. Those are stretch jobs. Those are things that teach you a lot of things. Don't be afraid of those. Lean into those. Think about those. Okay. So look, that's what I have for today. Um, I would like to pass on my email. Uh, and uh, they're going to put it in the chat or send it to you on Pathable. It's ramon.escobar at warnermedia.com. And so I would ask if you email me to also email my assistant uh, who, is in, who is intrepid, industrious, fantastic, and much smarter than me and keeps me in line. Her name is Shay, S-H-A-Y dot Blackwell, B-L-A-C-K-W-E-L-L, Blackwell at warnermedia.com. And uh, if you email the two of us, if you have more questions, I can expand on some of these things. Um, I care a lot about your success. Um, I care a lot about um, our community. I, you know, I care about the LGBTQ plus community and making sure that they get opportunities. If there's a way I can help you with advice, counsel, if you've got a job offer and you need, and you need help on negotiating or want some background, uh, I can try to help you with those things just in terms of trying to give you intelligence uh, if I possibly can. If it's with my company, that's a little different. But in general, I'm happy to help. 
uh, for people who need that kind of help. Um, because heck, you know, I didn't know about half those things or most of those things when I got started in this business and I've always looked for people to help me out. So don't hesitate. Like I said, congratulations for being a part of this conference. I really salute you. Uh, be visible, be proud. I think, I think it automatically ended, um, but that was wonderful. Thank you so much. I, I feel like I learned a lot. Um, oh, I think you're muted. I can't quite hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. I